Hi everyone, and this week we will cover another CEH scenario. It will be again very easy and straightforward scenario. We will just go through the standard uh, process to find the offsets and writing a very basic short jump statement and writing pop-up return address. And uh, in this one, instead of getting a rush shell, we will just uh, use a very standard shell code that you should pop um, calculator exam. I uh, know that this is not very realistic comparing to real life, but if you'd like to learn these techniques, CEH, accounting, uh, alphanumeric shell coding, or even the most basic ones, stack buffer overflows, you should probably see so many different applications and you should get used to have to write these exploits. So if you're ready, let's jump in. All right, as you can see, this is the path for the application Sorry Tongue. And uh, um, the vulnerability occurs in this txt file, ui.txt file. Uh, when this is an invalid file, the application crashes. So of course we will uh, take this as an advantage and we will put our exploit there. So what I will do is I fired up my cal in the background, my, uh, the put is running, psftp is running for file transfer. I will start writing a very simple exploit here, exploit py. I'm first writing the file name as always ui.txt. Uh, I'm defining a variable called buffer and creating uh, 1000 length of a character. And then I'm opening a file with uh, basic fighting comments, f open file, uh, w for writing on the file. Um, f write buffer, the variable will be written on the file and we're closing the file in this way. Uh, we're defining uh, w here so that it would rewrite the file over and over again every single time it's run. We run the file, ui.txt file is created. I am getting the file with psftp, which will appear on my desktop later, um, which should happen just now. Awesome. I will just copy and paste this file and this uh, under skin default for uh, sorry tongue. I'm running immunity debugger in the background. I'm running the file uh, instead of attaching in here. When I run it, the, ex, uh, the, the application crashes. And as you can see in the CA chain, I'm seeing 41, 41, 41, 41, meaning we overwrite it with so many A's. So as always, I am going to find the locket create. I'm going to find the pattern create. I'm creating 1000 length unique pa uh, pattern here. I'm writing this in my buffer variable instead of writing random A characters. Um, yeah, it makes also sense to define them more properly. But yeah, okay, I just commented the previous one. I create a new variable buffer and wrote the output here. I run the file, um, that means UITXT file is created. I got it with PSFTPD, uh, PSFTP, and I replaced the file in that directory. As always, I run immunity and I am opening the file like this um, and to see what's the unique pattern that I'm gonna get. Again, I'm seeing view, CA chain. And as you can see, um, before corrupt entry, uh, we got ch handler. We are copying this value and we're writing it for offset RB um, script. We're using minus Q option as always. Cool. And it gives us the offset 588, 588. Of course, this will be for junk plus NCH before the CH value. So for junk, I will write 584 instead of 588. For the next four bytes will be for NCH and we will be using a uh, short jump, uh, four bytes of short jump for NCH. As always, I'm defining NCH, uh, shellcode, junk, uh, all these values. For junk, as always, I'm writing some nobslets. Um, for NCH, I'm writing a short jump statement, XEB, X06, X90, X90. Um, you will memorize these at some point. Don't worry, guys. I will include so many different short jump statements, and some of them will be bad characters in, in some of the scenarios. So we will try to get around it. For CH, as always, I am looking for a DLL file. Player.dll looks fine. And I will run my find jump.exe file to find a pop up return statement. Um, when jump that exit, I'm writing the full pad of the DLL, writing the DLL name, player.dll, and then um, writing EDI as always. And then 
uh, hide so many typos. <laughs> and then we will filter with find SDR, uh, basic Windows comment for pop statement, and we'll do another filtering because we don't want 000 as a combination uh, because it's considered back character. Cool. Um, we extract these values, and as you can see, there are so many pop up return statement. I will just get the last one, doesn't matter. Uh, I should see this uh, address in CEH, um, CEH chain if I check the community debugger, if everything works properly. And for the shell code, I will go to a shell storm, as you can see in here. I will just get the calc exe. Um, um, shellcode, it's a very well-known one again, to pop up pop up a cal calculator exam. Um, again, for Shellstorm, we will use this website later while we are trying to figure out um, how we can use small places and how we can put a small size of shellcode there to, to do what, we, what action we want to do. Anyway, we are running the file. Oh yeah, I didn't define something here. Yeah, I was supposed to define the uh, variable buffer to include all these junk and ch, ch, um, and shellcode and junk too. For instance, in here, I didn't define knob slits. It's a very basic scenario and it, it, it still worked. I got the file, I pasted it in here again in this directory. I replaced the file with the previous one. I will run it. And as you can see, instead of crashing, it's given us calculator exam. I know it's very easy. I know it's very straightforward. You're probably thinking this is the most basic CH scenario. Yes, it is. Um, in the first videos, we covered stack buffer overflow. Um, in the next videos, we will be covering different CEH scenarios. Um, some of them are harder than these ones, but these are very straightforward. You're finding the offset, that's writing a short jump statement for NCH for CH, you're finding a pop-up return address, uh, you're writing a shell code. Uh, before that, we're supposed to find the bad characters. We will do it in more complex scenarios later because it, it requires another step. That's why I didn't include this in these. Um, and then you're adding a couple of knob slits, writing your shell code, and start listening on the port that you want to get the raw shell off. Very easy, very straightforward. But you, you know what they say. If you don't know what you don't know, um, it's not easy. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will try to include more extreme scenarios or harder scenarios for the next videos when it comes to CH. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers, guys.